Viewer discretion is advised. The period of European history between the 5th and 14th centuries is known as the Dark Ages for a reason. It's an era rife with political rivalries, religious intrigues, and cruel devices used to extract information and cause pain. Among the most notorious devices said to hail from the Dark Ages, none captures the imagination more than the infamous Iron Maiden. A metal casket towering nearly seven feet tall, its exterior features a woman's face, one allegedly inspired by the Virgin Mary. And when it's opened, there's an unholy surprise. There would be 20 strategically placed spikes that were meant to impale the body, but in such a way that it wouldn't kill the human inside, only prolong their agony. It would go into places that were very painful, but not particularly deadly. These spikes, because they're stabbed in, you're actually causing some sort of blockage of the blood coming out. You're going to bleed, and you're going to ooze around it, but it's actually going to take a lot longer to, say, bleed out. Stick them in a box, make them really, really uncomfortable so that they cannot sleep, they cannot move, they cannot breathe until they give in and give you what you want. You would be so surprised how resilient the human body is. The amount of damage that an individual can take and still be awake, alive, and suffering is immense. You can have a ton of broken bones, you can have you know, lacerations, cuts, all of these different things, and still suffer and feel the pain. You would think at some point you're gonna stop feeling pain because you're in shock and you don't feel it anymore. That is a misnomer. But as sadistic as this device is, there's another that's even more feared. One intended to inflict both terror and pain. Known as the rack, the mere sight of it often elicits a confession. We have bones popping, joints ripping, tendons coming undone. Individuals who, even after they're released from torture, they never walk the same way again. They're never able to stand upright again for the rest of their lives. This is a means of torture that is permanently damaging to the people that it is inflicted on. The rack is an elevated wooden frame with spokes. A victim's ankles and wrists are attached with ropes. Poles are inserted into sockets, and when pulled, turn the axles, slowly tearing the victim apart. When somebody's attached to a rack, what you hear is the popping sound of their joints and the cartilage as they are slowly dislocated. Or you'll start having some bleeding into the muscle, and the muscles might rip. And your muscles are attached by tendons, so tendons can then start ripping. Then, as you continue, your ligaments are going to start going. And when ligaments like that pop, what happens is then you can cause a dislocation of the joint. If you pull hard enough, there is enough force, probably, that you can actually rip limbs off. You're literally being ripped apart while someone is in your face asking you questions, demanding that you confess, telling you at any moment this can stop. Just do what we want you to do. It's not about guilt. It's not about innocence. It's about stop ripping my body apart. I will do whatever you want me to do. The machine is so powerful, the force it uses to break a spine is equal to a 500-pound wrecking ball crashing through a wall at 30 miles per hour. Very odd. They would stop the racking before they got to the point of death in order to then apply other tortures. Many of these devices are complex in their cruelty, but one is wickedly simple. The thumb screws are pretty aptly named. The goal is to mangle the hand by you know, putting it in a vise and using what are essentially screws to apply pressure to the thumb joints, both smashing them and pulling them away from the rest of the hand at the same time. You're causing a significant amount of soft tissue pain the nail actually might crack under that pressure, but if you continue to have the pressure, 
you actually have the ability to break the bones. Traditionally, thumb screws contain two metal bars. A screw on the center post, when turned, brings the bars together with great force, crushing whatever is placed between them. So if your hands are mangled from the thumb screws, people know that you've been tortured. And people know that that perhaps means you deserved it. Also, the mangling of the hands makes it very difficult for you to produce in a largely agricultural society. Most people worked with their hands. So to make the hands unusable is a theme that we see across the panoply of forms of torture in the Middle Ages. Thumb screws actually was used to elicit a lot of information because it hurt so much. Excruciating and portable thumb screws are popular far and wide, from witch trials to slave ship uprisings. But in the long history of torture devices, perhaps none is more diabolical than one designed not to crush, tear, or pierce, but to roast. One of the most sadistic torture devices to come out of the ancient world was from the 6th century BCE in Sicily, known as the Brazen Bull, also known as the Bull of Phalaris, named after the tyrant of Sicily. Phalaris, the tyrant, was known as being excessively evil. There are even stories that he engaged in cannibalism. The bull itself was actually invented by someone named Paralas. And Paralaus wanted to invent a device that would be meant to torture and also kill people, but in a very symbolic way, placing them into a large, hollow bronze bull where a fire would be lit under it. The brazen bull is essentially just a pressure cooker, right? So inside, there is an enclosed cavity of air that as that air heats, the people inside would be cooked alive. It's estimated that a person could survive inside the bull for up to 20 excruciating minutes. The bull is also almost entirely soundproof, except for two holes drilled into the nose. This is where the device becomes even more diabolical. The brazen bull was specifically designed so that the screams of the person would actually almost sound musical to people's ears. So rather than hearing the tortured, horrific, pained screams of a victim, they're listening to kind of the musical sounds coming from a large animal. Making this musical conversion possible is a system of pipes and reeds that transforms the anguished screams into sounds made by brass or wind instruments. And in a sick twist of fate, its first victim is the man who invented it. Something inside the tyrant Phalaris snapped. Perhaps it was being confronted by another sociopath. Perhaps he was angry that Paralus was more creative than he had thought. But he invited Paralus to climb inside the bull himself and show the tyrant Phalaris how exactly did these pipes work. He's happy to test out his device. He's very proud of what he's created. What he does not know is that Phalaris is going to slam the door shut, trapping Paralaus in the brazen bull and then having a fire lit underneath. Paralaus cannot escape, and he is forced to stay inside the bull, literally becoming the actual test subject of this torture device. The death of Paralaus is kind of a standard trope in Greek tragedy and Greek storytelling. You have the sociopath, the sicko, who creates the horrible, awful thing, and then, of course, becomes destroyed by the horrible, awful thing that he created. 